<laughs> so I thought I would make a video about autopoiesis because I think about it all the time, every day. Maximus talks about biology and other stuff. Uh, yeah, so this word, autopoiesis. Auto meaning self and like, 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 like automatic. Um, and poesis, I don't actually know what poesis means. I should, I should look that up. So autopoiesis as an idea is a, a theory or, or, you know, a process, a theoretical construct. I don't know, all these academics, they blah. So anyway, autopoiesis was, was developed by, by two Chilean biologists in the 70s, I think. Uh, one was Humberto Maturana and the other one was Francisco Varela. I can't say those things. They were trying to capture cell theory, I guess, or you know, what what it means to be alive, what it means to be doing living things. Kind of like this. It's kind of shaped like this. Yeah. Their their theoretical work was is very limited onto cell theory, basically. But in in more recent years, the the idea of autopoiesis uh, has been expanded uh, much much bigger than that. And and the big version of autopoiesis is, is what what really captivates me and, and what I want to talk about today. So in a nutshell, uh, the idea of autopoiesis is that all of the parts are there for the sake of themselves. Or so you know to to put it another way, it's you know like like each each component is there for the the sake of the whole, and the whole is there for the sake of the component. So you get this like reciprocal like whoosh kind of thing, where where the the parts of the small parts of the machine build the entire machine, and the goal of the entire machine is to. Uh, acquire the resources necessary to build the parts. So you get this looping, 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 looping. And, and so you can talk about that in terms of like a, a tiny little cell, or you can talk about it in terms of like entire societies. Related transition! So I'm moving into this place uh, called Place. <laughs> it's, it's a location. It's called Place for Sustainable Living. And what I think is so fantastic about it is, is that it, it really embodies these autopoetic tendencies on, on, a, on a very large scale. So what does Place have? Place has a bunch of gardens, you know, gardens everywhere, living things everywhere. And there's also, there's a kitchen and there's a maker space and there's a, a theater, you know, there's, there's a stage for, for, for talking and gathering people together. And there's all these different maker spaces, you know, there's, there's a wood shop and there's a bike shop and there's a ceramic studio and there's, there's a sewing room and there's all these different pieces and they're all in one place and each piece is oriented around making the entire place alive, making the entire place vibrant. And, and you know, you could, you could still have the place if you remove some of the pieces, but, but all of them together is what, what makes place a living thing, an autopoetic entity, and each each little component is there for the sake of the whole, and the whole is there for the sake of those components. Conclusion. So yeah, that's that's autopoiesis in a nutshell. I will definitely make another video about it in more detail, especially the the more biological side. This has been running around in my head for a long, long time. I thought I'd put it out there in a really quick form. Thanks for watching. Oh yes, and and. Uh, if you have to remember one thing, remember that everything and nothing are the same thing. Goodbye.